Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. If you suffer from melasma or any form of pigmentation, this is the pivotal video that will change your management. So it's the foundation of treating all forms of pigment and it's super important. So let's get into it. Melasma and disorders of pigmentation, including post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is really common. And we all know that sunlight, including UVA, UVB, as well as high energy visible light, and in some cases even infrared light, can actually worsen the condition itself. So the foundation of treatment is sunscreens, but it gets more complex than this, and let's delve into why this is so. So first of all, these disorders usually affect darker skin types. So we're talking about skin type three, four, five, and six. In other words, mainly ethnic persons. However, we still have melasma that's common in lighter skin types. Now, the problem with this condition is that the action spectrum, in other words, the wavelengths of light that stimulate pigment is not usually covered in sunscreens. In other words, we have to use specific sunscreens or augment our sunscreens with iron oxide. So here's the basis behind why this is needed. In our skin cells, we have melanocytes. Basically, melanocytes are pigment-producing cells and they have dendritic processes, in other words, arms, which when they produce pigment, transfer it to the keratinocytes, right? So it is um, constituted. Now, these melanocytes are sensitive uh, to various wavelengths of light. They include UVB, B is for burning, UVA, which goes deeper, and in the vast majority of times, it's also visible light. And visible light is usually in the HEV, the high energy visible spectrum, which is basically blue light. Now, this is especially important if you have skin of color, because skin of color has a receptor called the OPSN receptor on your melanocytes. And this receptor is prone or gets stimulated by blue light. Now, here's the catch. When we're using sunscreens, non-tinted sunscreens, the majority of times it protects against long wave UVA if you get good sunscreens, but most, in fact, all sunscreens protect against UVB. So when we cover the spectrum of UVB and UVA, generally speaking, that's much easier to attenuate. In other words, to block out. Now the problems with sunscreens is this. Once we make them cosmetically elegant, in other words, when you apply it to your face and you don't have that white sheen, the molecule of your titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which is the most common inorganic or physical sunscreens, gets very small. So anything less than 100 nanometers is known as micronized. When that happens, your actual reflection of your visible light decreases, which means that sunscreen is only good for UVB and UVA further protection, which leaves you this big gap of not getting protected in the high energy visible blue light spectrum. So how can we actually augment this? First of all, you can choose a tinted sunscreen that's suitable to your skin color. And here's the catch. The vast majority of manufacturers don't actually make a good match for your color, especially for skin of color. Because when you alter that match just a slight tiny bit, the cosmetically elegant sunscreen becomes inelegant and people will not actually use it because it looks kind of funny on your skin. So if you can find a tinted sunscreen that has your color match, then that contains iron oxide. And the iron oxides are variable between yellow, red, and black. So you have good sunscreens, for example, like Milan 130, which is a very, very good sunscreen. It contains iron oxides, titanium dioxide. It contains key elements or key ingredients that make it a very good sunscreen with a very high SPF protection of over 130 and hence the name Milan 130. Now the downside about it is that this sunscreen provides a little bit more reddish hue compared to the other sunscreens. So even though it's a good sunscreen, it may not suit your color match. And the same applies across the board to many different brands, including things like um, La Roche-Posay with their Enthelios range as well. Generally speaking, these sunscreens have between one to two color shades and that's it. So how do we get around this? Well, you can get around this by augmenting iron oxide found in your foundation or your mineral makeup. So mineral makeup especially contains a high amount of iron oxides. So don't get stressed about trying to find a sunscreen that's suitable for your skin tint or your skin color, skin tone. 
Try to get one that's cosmetically elegant, one with high UV, B, UV, A photo protection and find something which is cost effective. From there, you can augment your application with something simple as um, mineral makeup. And to find out what's the best tool or find out how to actually do it, there's a website called Match My Makeup. So if you know the color of your makeup and you want to actually change that to something like a mineral makeup, where there's a high content of iron oxide, you can go to Match My Makeup. Input your actual makeup uh, itself and what happens is that this program uses what's known as your RGB factors, in other words, your spectrometry, to figure out what's the best color match for your particular makeup across the board. So guys, that's the fundamental aspects of treating skin of color and disorders of pigmentation. You do need to block out visible light because if you don't do so, your pigment will continue to stimulate. I hope you liked that video. It's a simple one, important concept, and it forms the foundation of treatment for skin of color and pigmentary conditions. Bye for now.